and learning disabilities. Um, tonight I'm with Melanie Schmaltz, a uh, senior neurofeedback trainer of our team. And uh, we start right away. Uh, yeah. Because we have a lot, we have a lot to tell. We have a lot to tell. So, uh, just for the small uh, introduction, so the event, the webinar will be recorded, and it will be published on Facebook on our Facebook page, but also on our YouTube channel. So don't ask. Uh, there will be no. Um, you can ask every question you ever want because you have for that the chat window on the right uh, lower corner where you can type like i just did hi this is where the question goes um we had a lot of uh, registration i know that adhd and learning disabilities is a big topic um so let's start and so first who we are and why we do we talk about uh, uh learning disabilities and ADHD. Um, first, I have, I have ADHD, but I'm not the only one. Um, um, Melanie is also there. She's a neuropsychologist. She's now working since four years with me, and um, she comes from Strasbourg. Since um, January, we have uh, Lou Ries, who Melendez, who is now also working with us. She's actually doing some training sessions with clients. And since June, we have a new face in our team. Uh, this is Patrick Joost. Uh, I would call him the problem solver. Uh, I think that's the best title he can get. Um, he's not working with clients, but he's allowing us to solve the problem so we that we can work better with our clients. And so that's what we're going to uh, then talk today that's the presentation uh, we have 60 slides so we, i need to talk fast but uh, don't be afraid to ask questions because we are doing this every day for uh, for us it's normal to do this uh, and to talk about that but for other people maybe not so the idea is to talk a little bit and short introduction about adhd and learning disabilities but without going into too deep and then mainly what is the focus is what is how can we measure it? How can we see it? And what can we do? So this is about QEG and the neurotechnology and the other things. Um, what, where are we located? We are located in Luxembourg near the, the GAR. Um, we have a ni really nice location, uh, which is the Silver Square Liberté, which is a co-working space. So it's quite fancy, which our clients like uh, find it it's, it's it's really usable you can also accessible by by wheelchair um the only thing we don't have is a phone number where you can call because we don't have a secretary otherwise our sessions would be uh, more expensive and but you can always arrange and that is really important uh, a free uh, free call so just go on the website if you have questions want to know more uh, i'm not sure if this is right no problem, we, uh, but we need to pick an appointment to be available and to have time and to answer your questions. Um, who do, what are we doing? This is our services first, which is called QEG. We analyze the nervous system by the, measuring the HRV, the heart rate variability, with doing an electrocardiogram. We, but mainly we do neurofeedback and neuromodulation. And there's also a lot of testing in the neuropsychology, cognitive testing, health questionnaires, and more, which is always part of our service, which is really important. Um, but for for whom do we do this? And this is quite uh, interesting because uh, almost everyone, so we have classified the, the main applications of what we're doing. The first topic is the topic of the day also, learning and developmental developmental disabilities, which for us is a, a group, common name for ADHD, but also like things like Axia, uh, autism, Asperger, also high potential and hypersensitivity. Um, this is more, not only for children, it's also for adults. So good part of our second topic, um, 
this is the stress and the emotional distress, anxiety, panic attacks, phobias, or kind of motivation results on working on trauma, psychological trauma, PTSD, complex PTSD, sleep problems, uh, and obsessive uh, compulsive behaviors and tics, things like that. Um, and we have also some, what we call it, instability and brain alterations, which is more serious things like epilepsy and absence, migraine, headaches, but also we are having good results on, on most serious things like neurodegenerative things like uh, dementia, Alzheimer, Parkinson, brain injury and stroke. We will have also soon a new website with a nice client uh, who will tell a little bit what, what we, what we, how we could help them. And the last one is more, you don't need to be sick to come to visit us and to profit from our uh, uh, services. Uh, because you can also use this for just getting better performance. This is more the performance and optimization, burnout, bore out, which have the same effect on the nervous system, on the brain, than the burnout. And if you are a little bit uh, lost and you don't know where to go, um, we can also help improve mental performance, sports performance, or increase the resistance to stress. So don't uh, hesitate. So... Melanie, I think you got uh, a, a, you have a new co-presenter. Um... She is needy. <laughs> okay. She wants to be with me and walk. <laughs> She's crying in, at the door, so she will be there. Hope she will be quiet. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so I hand it over to you. So yeah, my my turn. Uh, so as Francois said, we will not go so deep inside all the the symptoms and uh, all the neurological and neurobiological root of disorder, but just give you a small peek. If you want further information or go deeper in a subject, don't hesitate to contact us per email because we have a huge library <laughs> uh, So on every subject you're interested in. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to, to present a little bit uh, if there is difference or not between ADHD and learning disability. And there is, there is a little bit. Uh, so first, ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, but the learning disability or the DIS are a specific category in developmental disorder. So it's an under category, I would say. Uh, then the percentage of kids suffering from it are a little bit different. In ADHD, it depends uh, in every country, the amount is different and it's two to three boys for a girl. And uh, for the learning disability is 10 to 15 percentage of children for an age group. So it's very, very different. Uh, and what you need to know, as me, is that ADHD is really, really, really regularly, almost 90% of the time, paired with uh, learning disabilities or men. Because what, if you have one learning disability, you have 40% uh, of chance to have another one or many. Well, two, three, four, depends uh, the severity of the symptoms. Sometimes you just found one, like dyslexia. It's easy to see that there is difficulty to, uh, to read, etc. But for example, there, there are a lot of kids that have uh, dyspraxia and people just think it's clumsy kid and nothing to do with learning disabilities in they. Uh, they think it's because they have ADHD that they are clumsy, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, so yeah, something really important to know because that's how I discovered my diagnosis of ADHD. It was in February 22. So I was to the psychologist to uh, learn about more dyscalculia because I was having some doubts about it. And when she found that, yeah, I have it severely, she was like, mm, Melanie, <laughs> do you know that when you have dyslexia, dyscalculia, you have a huge uh, chance of having ADHD? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and 
And when we uh, we ran, I ran the test and the questionnaires and all that stuff with uh, when I was a kid with my parents, etc. And it was, of course, positive. <laughs> Four, four on five or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I discovered it uh, this year. And so there is a little bit of difference between ADHD and learning disability. Uh, ADHD is really focused on attention, concentration, uh, difficulties, impulsivity issue, hyperactivity, uh, daydreaming, stuff like that. And learning disabilities is more focused on um, a principal basic cognitive function, uh, an alteration of this cognitive function, the brain has difficulty to uh, make some automatization in the learning. Normally, when a kid is uh, learning how to read or how to ride a bike, first time it's really hard, but with the practice, it gets easier because the, the brain is learning a little bit each time and then it's uh, automatic. But with learning disability, it's not the case. There is not this automatization. For example, I am unable to memorize all the, um, the table with all the multiplication more than an hour. I know them for an hour. And then when you ask me three, four hours later, forget. I always forget. Uh, and I'm still unable to read correctly uh, the time on a classic uh, clock. So thanks to the digital one, uh, because I will struggle with time otherwise. <laughs> so yeah, that's some of uh, example. And uh, to have this diagnosis, it's really important to check the IQ, the sense to see if the kids is, has no uh, ears problem, listening, if the view is good, uh, if there is no psychiatric disorder, anxiety or stuff like that can also look like on the symptoms with ADHD, but they are really different for, uh, if you want to treat it. And really important, it should be present since your child, but you can also uh, miss it as a parent uh, for your child. For example, me. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, in my world. I was sometimes dreaming during class, etc. But as I was a good kid, quiet, like not disturbing anyone, uh, I have hyperactivity, but it was never a problem in class. And my grades were good. Uh, so nobody ever asks uh, if I, I got a problem. <laughs> uh, it's always when you have uh, school difficulties that the parents are like, mm, maybe we should check with ADHD, but you can totally have a totally normal school uh, cursus uh, and having ADHD depends uh, on people. So I won't get into details because all this information, you can find them really easily on the internet, but I just put it there. So if you want to have it, when you watch the replay, you, you can just pause the video and read it. That's all the symptoms you can find in the DSM when uh, the professional are um, uh, trying to find the, the diagnosis. All, all, it's not all the symptoms, but the main ones uh, for dyslexia, dysorthographia, dyscalculia, and you have the same with uh, dysphasia, dyspraxia, dysgraphia. They are all, all really different and not touching the same process in the brain and in the life. So this is for dyscalculia. When I, I check on it, it was a full page of several uh, several uh, symptoms so it's really and depends the severity also you it's not uh, that you have all of them but you can have all of them so that's that the severity depends uh, the question is the is the brain involved uh, of course <laughs> uh, in every symptoms you get, uh, attention deficit, sleep problem, anxiety, depression, whatever is it, it is, and it's disturbing your everyday life, there is always something to do with your brain, with your gut, with something in your body that is not functioning in the right way. Uh, so for ADHD, it's a little bit different than from the learning disability. So that's why I separate them. Uh, 
for example, in ADHD, we know precisely where are the dysfunction of the brain. So that's one of the parts. It's way more deeper and precise than that, but I don't want to lose everyone. So uh, there is a multiple attention network that are underactive if you look from someone that don't, don't have uh, IDHD and all of the prefrontal network because, uh, for example, inhibition and organization is uh, a function of the frontal lobe. So if attention network and prefrontal network are underactivated, hard to do something as uh, someone else <laughs> without ADHD. Uh, you also have... Uh, decreased connection between some really, really important area. So, for example, the front and the posterior part and uh, the precuneus and intersingulate cortex. So that's the what we call the DMN, uh, default mode network. So today it's very, very known for a thousand things. I don't know, Francois, if you want to... The okay. default mode is the most important network because it's always on when we do nothing. We think that the brain is always occupied, but that's not true. Uh, in fact, the brain switches and the, the, the default mode network is is the, the, the network where also the, the I, who am I, uh, what, what am I doing on earth, the, the pain processing, the... There, there's a lot of things going on in, in the default mode and it's also often deregulated in, in ADHD but also in the spectrum of the autism. <coughs> so maybe maybe I can just answer the question here because it's a really good question from Hi, Janelle. Uh, uh, Janelle. What, why do you think the numbers of ADHD is different in different countries? Yeah, that's really... funny because I just read an article this morning about that yeah okay then uh, then you can was, start a scientist was asking the same question and he explained that it was in a part normal because the first things is that the the diagnosis all the the, the step you have to do to get a diagnosis are not the same in every country and i remember you re the first time you told me yes. the story about luxembourg not thinking that adhd is existing in adulthood also yes all the misunderstanding and it was really recent right there, there's there's a big cultural difference i think yeah. uh, example in in france it's less uh, diagnostic um, because cultural you uh, i have met several psychiatricians pediatricians and whatever uh, doctors who deny adhd in france they exist it's not yeah. possible uh, yeah. they deny the science fact okay so there's the cultural part but i think the most problematic thing uh, in diagnosing ADHD is the underdiagnosed women part. I was last week in a conference um, uh, from the uh, SCAP in, in, in Luxembourg about the ADHD. There was an, an, a Dutch uh, doctor coming uh, and talking about the specificities for, for ADHD for women, which are crazy that because there's no studies, there's no data, uh, we don't know. Well, <laughs> Yes, it's always men because uh, part of the cycle and the impact and everything. So, yeah, it's a cultural thing. And then I would like to add a, a really interesting part. If you look at a, a country as big as the US, uh, Martin Arns did a really interesting study about that. Uh, who he, he showed geographically where are more ADHD and he superimposed uh, yes. where 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 there is more or less sun exposition and yes. they match to 95 percent so when there is more sunlight there is less adhd diagnosed so yeah. interesting uh, they, they start we... to study that they start to study that because i just saw i think it was last week uh sebastian Orard, the french neuropsychologist uh, just published something uh, uh, about analyze between uh, vitamin D and ADHD symptoms when they are diagnosed. And the ADHD symptoms are way worse during winter for people. They need more to have uh, supplements than non-ADHD yeah. people. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Really interesting. Yeah, I forgot about that. We, we need to talk together about your conference with the woman in AD, with ADHD. <laughs> I, want to, I want to know more. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, then I give you a big shout. Uh, they found out that they had more of a COVID also. 
Oh, really? Oh, yes. I, I must be the really rare woman yeah. without having COVID. I'm lucky, touching wood, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, to, to go back to presentation, um, you see, we are. Just, we just, are just, just, just finish. Uh, uh, is ADHD related to environment? Um, it depends on what you put in the name. I would say is ADHD related to your to your life hygiene. So your yes, it's related to uh, what you eat, what how you sleep, how well you drink, um, if you exercise. All these things can uh, uh, diminish the the, the the symptoms, or they can ex make make them explode. So, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So. Uh, just a few reminder in ADHD, you have also a high risk of having uh, a mem working memory impairment, so it's really hard. Uh, it's more of a vigilance issue. The brain is either on, hyper focus. It was me yesterday, I achieved a big task uh, that normally took a week in three hours. <laughs> Thanks for ADHD. I was really happy to have it because I needed to do this task now. Uh, but it can also be half. That's when it's hard for your brain to concentrate. As many efforts you put in, it's not possible. Yeah. There is not, not the just middle in between. The, the typical thing is uh, an ADHD, you ask him to sit still doing nothing. 10 minutes on a chair, after two minutes, he sleeps. Yeah, yeah, that's the main, uh, the main things. When when you fell asleep by doing just nothing for five minutes, it's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. That's... You're either in burnout or having ADHD. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's a lack of self-regulation because also of the decreased dopamine theory that is like everybody knows about now. Uh, that's why some of ADHD people have the tendency to. Uh, trying to find more dopamine by other, I right. would say not dangerous compartments, but you know, uh, intensity high seeking, intensity yeah. seeking. Yeah, high speed in car, motorcycle, doing extreme sports, gambling, uh, drugs. Also, uh, it's not the case of every ADHD people, but yeah, the sometimes risk is quite high. Uh, impulse shopping, <laughs> unfortunately, <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, that can the be. The, the other part is they cannot delay the reward. If you ask the ADHD, would you like one ice cream now or, I don't know, 10 ice creams tomorrow, they always will choose one now, not the delay. The reward, uh, delayed reward is not possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's too long. Always, we are... No, it's not a day. Now is now. Yeah, it's far away tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So for the uh, learning disability, it's not exactly as um, uh, as precise as ADHD. There were uh, there are not so much study about that because it's hard. Why? Because it's rarely one isolated network on, or area in the brain that is impaired or underactive or something like that. It's not. It's really hard for the science to identify what is causing what in which learning disability why because it there there exists so many different combination when they look at kids with the same diagnosis they have not the same severity they have not the same symptoms uh, they have not the same brain uh, and also there is a deficit of connectivity between this different combination of area together so it's really hard and that's why for the moment there is no, they have knowledge as for example, if we, if we take a look at dyscalculia or dyspraxia, they know some of the things like uh, some really lesion uh, or deficiency, etc. but it's not something you will automatically find in every people with dyscalculia, for example. So that's a little bit harder. And I think, Maybe it's because the science does not have the good tool for the moment, or maybe it's because we were looking not uh, correctly as uh, at the brain or something like that, but it will get more precise with time, I guess. Just one thing to add, the ADHD 
is definitively, in my opinion, and I've seen a few hundreds ADHD now, um, genetically. I never saw uh, mm. a, a, an ADHD kid without that one of the parents had uh, that. For the this calculia, this yeah, yeah. That, it's different. Yeah, it's, it's different. Right. It's different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You so, have ADHD families, but you don't have this calculia families. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom and my dad were super good at math, so it doesn't make any yeah. sense. <laughs> but you took I the wrong number. You took the wrong number. ADHD. I, I'm still, I don't know, maybe my mom was hiding ADHD as me, so maybe she was suffering from it. <laughs> so, but I don't know which one. Sometimes it's really clear. But yeah, I'm the only one with the dyscalculia in family. Uh, yeah, so that was a little bit for the neurobiological and neuro yeah, the, the idea today was not to focus because it's two topics we could speak hours about it uh, because yeah. we, we we met so many cases, we have so many experience. Today yeah. was really the idea of, anyway, you have, if you are concerned with that or one member of your family is concerned, you have only one choice. is You have to become the expert of your own uh, symptoms because no one ever will be available will be uh, able to to understand what you have and what changes you need to to get uh, to read about it to meet other people uh, at the end of the slides we'll also give some 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 things um, help uh, in luxembourg at least where you can get more help it's you you don't have to be alone it's it's the most part read about it learn about it accept it and exchange yeah. with others yeah. otherwise you will not get uh, yeah it's yeah. it's a lifetime it's a yeah. lifetime yeah. job yeah we we know that if you're suffering from it you're knowing all about that suffering and that symptom so we don't need to go deeper inside that you you know what you're actually going through but that's totally right what Francois says it's not an obligation to get a diagnosis if you don't want because for I me it was that. a relief for me, it was really for me exactly when she said to me, "Yes, you have dyslexia." I was like, "Dyscalculia, sorry." It's like, "Yes, I'm not dumb. <laughs> That's not my fault. I'm not lazy or dumb, as I've heard all my my childhood when I was uh, in math lesson. Because I've done uh, in France, it's uh, baccalaureate scientific, so it's with full math. I was a little bit crazy, I guess." <laughs> And also in Europe, psychology, you have statistics for six years. So, and I was always having like two out of 10. I was really bad at it. I was like, what's the problem with me? Why, why I'm so yes. dumb? Yeah. The, 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 I think the most common thing is that the, the both categories, the ADHD and the learning disabilities, the, the, the people and the kids, they feel not normal. They feel that they are different. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is really a problem. It's a bomb for the self-esteem. Yeah. The self-esteem goes down. Uh, you, 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 can, you cannot do simple things other people, other kids do in five minutes. You, don't, you can't do that. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's really self-esteem. It, it's really, yeah. Yeah, I remember myself crying while doing homework a lot of time and my mom was it com was completely desperate. She was like, yeah, no, you know, you you all your calcul. And then she asked me half an hour later and she was like, but what, what the? <laughs> and yeah. so I was crying in the kitchen and yeah, a mess. I, I remember it really clearly. And the fact is that I've got so many bad experiences if someone just asked me totally naturally, oh, what is 20 plus 45? It's total blackouts in my head because of the, the anxiousness state. I'm like totally freezing and uh, I'm unable to do one plus one. <laughs> So, yeah. the, 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 the most important part you can as parent or as uh, I, I think there are also a lot of uh, professionals from school uh, who are just uh, today is the ADHD and the learning disabilities. They need positive feedback. If they get a small step done, they need to be rewarded and not a single reward. Well done. No, bigger. Make it big. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, go on. Because they got every day, they got every day bad feedback. Oh, you're not capable of doing that. You missed that one. You didn't do that. Oh, you're too late. You the pa pa pa. They are. We, we see regularly small children with depressions mm -hmm. because they 
uh, because they have these bad experiences. So the mm -hmm. role of the professionals is to focus on the good sides because there are also good sides in both things. There's yeah. a, a, we, we could list you uh, really capable people who, who are ADHD and learning disabilities. Yeah. Like in, uh, I, I don't know, Elon Musk is also a learning disability. A lot, lot of yeah. people. There's yes. a few, a few, there are a few facing people. ADHD and learning, it's not an, it's not a handicap. Uh, yeah, it, it's I, a superpower. It's a superpower, but you need, you, know. you, you need to know it. You need to know strengths, and you need to know to use them. Yeah. So we have also a question about the delayed re before we go into the neurofeedback part. Yeah. Um, about the uh, delayed reward issue. About the delayed. Is it that adults just learned how to handle that? Yes, you know what is the difference between children and adults? It's here. It's the prefrontal cortex. You, They are offline when you are a child and, and they come online, I think, around at the age of 12, something around uh, that. It ends to mature the frontal cortex when you are between 25 and 30 years okay. old. But but it only starts to work to oh, me yes, yes. At, up from 12. Before 12, you don't have that part. Mm -hmm. the, 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 and what is that part? I call this the CEO. That's the planning man who, who can plan, okay, I do that tomorrow. Uh, if you do it, that's not a point, but you, you can project in the future. You can, yeah, adults learn yeah. to cope with it. Again, depends on the severity of the yeah. symptoms. Yeah. Some adults can totally compensate the ADHD symptoms. They try to learn, but they discharge at home. <laughs> yeah. uh, but some of them just not possible because most of the time they are not capable of it because they are they don't know they have ADHD. When you know you have it, you're more aware of your state and exactly. you know oh today i feel a little bit impulsive maybe i i must do this or this to help me or oh, today i'm feeling energized so i can do this or this you you're more uh you adapt more yourself to uh, every day so when you know you have it you're more uh paying attention to that and it's easier to go every day after every day. So that's a really good question. I see that Janelle is asking a questions of the lesion of supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus. They are really precise parts in the brain. And why is there a lesion? It's not for everybody, but as uh, it's written on the on the, the the in the upper part here. It's then, for example, in 70%, this calculia occurs after fetal alcohol syndrome. So, for example, if there is some intoxication during pregnancy with cigarettes and with alcohol, that can cause lesion in the brain. But it's not the case of a normal born child without any issue. But that's one of the things that can uh, trigger and get people uh, dyscalculia. So that's that's the, the an example. You have brain lesion before being born. There is something that during the development has occurred and poof has stopped the, the brain development. But it's not the case for everybody. So that's the that's one of the, the part in this calculia. Hope it helps and answer your question. <laughs> So, uh, Francois, you want yes. to do the EEG and I do new Yes. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's okay. Oh, let's do it that way. Okay. Anyway, so um, this is our, the core of our, of our job is to look, to analyze the brain activity and to change it. So we are using what is called the electroencephalogram. Um, this is the, the brain, in fact, uses two systems to work. Uh, the chemical part, which are the neurotransmitters like dopamine and these things, but they have a big disadvantage. It's not possible to measure the presence and the amount of dopamine in the brain apart you, you you drill a hole and that's not recommended uh, the other way around to look what's going on in the in the head is the eeg uh, which has uh, several advantages also against the uh, fmri scanner or what else because it has really really nice um uh, temporal resolution so we can really measure and see the changes in the milliseconds uh, uh, in comparison um, fmri scanner has really better geolocalization the resolution is way way better but the temporality is really bad you need a few minutes recordings 
And if you look at brain activity a few minutes, you have a smearing of the activity. In the EEG, you have it, you see it real time, what is going on. And we see the brain of our patients real time. So how does this look like? This looks like this nice uh, drawing here. Um, um, it has a diagnostic value in, in the fact that the neurologist has is allowed to 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 base on that. The EG is used in the medicine over 100 years. Hans Berger discovered in 1920, I think, something like that. Um, and it's a neurologist to use normally EG, but in, in for things you don't want to hear, uh, normally it's about uh, inflammation, tumors, lesion, uh, uh, other kind of thing you don't want to have. Um, we, we record exactly the same thing. So we have 20, 20, 24 channel uh, EEG, what we measure uh, over the whole head, real time. In, and this is the, uh, the brain activation, uh, the brain electrical activity. And this activity, it's called uh, what it was called brain waves. These are frequencies. No? Um, the, the, the first, free, uh, I start with the lowest one. So what is important to know is that none of these uh, frequency are bad or good. It depends, as usual, where do you have them and how much you have of them. So uh, delta, zero to four hertz. They are the sm smallest, they are the... The lower, the, 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 the slowest, uh, uh, wait, I have a pointer. Now I think you can see my pointer. Yes. So there you are, that, that's the waveform. They are really irregular. They are big. They are slow. Zero to four oscillations in one second. You recognize them. And uh, the delta is corresponds to the state when you are in deep sleep or when you're in coma. But it's also the brain repairing or what is more, and when we speak about learning and ADHD difficulties, is it's an image of your brain. Maybe uh, what we see often is that parts of the brain are overactive and other parts are really slow. And that's when we see delta. And delta is not what you want to have in your day activity. Then the second part, theta, this is also mainly, mostly uh, for the ADHD part, this is the dreamer because you know there is the ADHD, there are two versions. There's the with hyperactivity and without hyperactivity. So in the, the dreamer, like I am, um, they have a lot of theta. Uh, theta is really slow, it's four to eight hertz. And the theta for ADHD normally is centr central. Uh, it goes more frontal as your brain matures. Adults have it more frontally. Uh, children has it more, have it more centrally. Um, and it's still an irregular waveform, but theta is also example for creativity, dreaming. Uh, uh, when when you have the the, the 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 healers, when they do healing, this is also in theta. So there's it's not always bad. Then the third one is the alpha. These are the nicest waves. You, you see the pattern here. This is like it's it's symmetric. It's organized. It, it's well. It, it waxes and wanes, gets bigger and small. And you recognize alpha waves uh, in, in every brain wave. You when there is alpha, you recognize it. it visually, it's it's really nice to see. And it was the first rhythm uh, who discovered because it's really visual. So alpha is generated in the back of the head. And it's related to relaxation. When you're in alpha state is when you are like meditating. So you're awake, but you are not connected to the outside world. You don't process any from information. You're just connected to yourself and that's it. And then the next comes beta. Beta is the largest uh, frequency. So it goes from 12 to 25. Uh, uh, I hope that today you are in beta, not in high beta and not too high. So uh, ideally, uh, something around 15 hertz. Then you are alert. You can you understand. You are you you make good conclusions, but above 20 hertz begins the stress, and uh, you know energy is the question uh, uh, is a big question in everybody's mouth today uh, uh, in the brain too because uh, you have to imagine that what you are getting more on the right side, this consumes. 10 times the energy from the first one. So not 10 times, but uh, X times uh, more energy. So you, you have to manage the, 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 the energy in your body because the brain is the biggest energy consumer in the body. It's around 25% on 25, like, like um, a bulb of 25 watts. 
just from the first second you live till the last breath you take. And then we have the last uh, waves. These are the ones uh, which are related to the fight and flight modus. So this is crisis. This is surviving. This is, uh, you have to, this is a high energy, but it's, 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 it's should be used short term actions not you don't cannot you cannot uh, work in in high beta a long time because you will be exhausted you spend too much energy okay and what you see here below these are how we how we look at the brain and this we see uh, in 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 real time when we do our trainings so and the the oh i just forgot to mention this here this is the comparison with the norm because what we use, we have databases where thousands of brain have been screened, brain with problems, no problems. So we know what is the, how much alpha should an adult have, how much alpha should a child at 10 age have. Uh, so, and this is all, all because the brain changes very much in the younger years. Uh, brain from a 12 year old and an eight year old is not the same. <clears throat> if you pass your 40, then the brain doesn't change a lot. It, it doesn't get better, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> and so a few examples of abnormalities. The comparison with the norm is, for example, the blue means underactivation. This is typically someone who doesn't sleep well. If you have a lack of delta, you have a lack of deep sleep often. You are exhausted and you are either on or off, but you cannot modulate your activity. And if you have an alpha frontal left, but then you are more into the... Uh, depression on the sad part, you are on the, on the sad part of the world. Uh, when you have a central activity like in beta, high beta, like that, that is more anxiety. This would be related to anxiety, but could also be inflammation. It's always, you never can take conclusions by just looking at the brain nerves. You have to see the person, you know, have to know the history, you have to know the medications they take, you have to, that's a, not only looking at the image and then, oh, it's that. No, uh, you have to make more. <clears throat> so, yeah, example, exhaustion, anxiety, depression. Nice. <clears throat> but we have way more data. We don't show everything to our clients because we could uh, make you uh, sick with all our data we produce in, in one recording. Uh, just to have an idea, when we do a recording of five minutes, we have at least uh, 40 pages report behind that. So, uh, and we can calculate a lot more. Here's another way, which is really important because it's all about connectivity in the brain. We have 100 mil million, uh, no, million, uh, billions of neurons uh, in the brain. And each neuron is connected to 10,000 other uh, neurons. So the communication between the different areas in the brain is really important and that's a way how we look at it for example uh, this one is more interesting for example uh, this would be the case for more a dysle dyslexia because we're looking at broadman area 22 which is linked to which is called vernica area uh, which is where the language uh, happens so uh, if it's blue then it's not connected so these are the kind of information we get we don't give this to clients because otherwise they will have to make a PhD to understand what you're doing here. Um, we have a lot of other ways to look at it. Um, this is really also a tool we use every session with our uh, clients, but we don't give it out because there are strange things sometimes and people cannot make the adjustment. But this is typically would be for an, an ADHD kid or adult, um, because here we have uh, the, 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 the statistically probability of that this problem is there. Example, we have here six times attention, we have the dyscalculia, we have the slow reader, um, working memory and anxiety. It, it, these are the symptoms which are probable. That is not a diagnostic. Again, we don't give diagnostic, but we like statistics. And if, to be honest, I, uh, I rely more on the statistics than on what people tell me. <laughs> but that's my problem. Other, other things, how we analyze the brain activity is one of the most important part is, I think just by looking at this graph, I can tell what's going on in the brain if I know 
which age we are looking at. An example, this is the, what we call the alpha peak. The alpha peak is when you close the eyes, the one third of the brain has nothing has nothing to do. And then it's, not, it's like when you're driving a car, you come to red light, you take the foot from the accelerator, your motor has to go in the idle rhythm which is around 1,000 rotations RPM, 1,000 rotations per minute in the car normally. Um, if your um, idle rhythm in the car is lower than 1,000, your chances are that you, when you will want to start, that your motor gets stuck is big. And if you have a, the idle rhythm on, I don't know, 2,000 uh, rotations per minute RPM, then you don't uh, relax at, at the end and you consume too much energy, use your motor. This example, this is a brain which has an, an, an alpha peak of 8.5 hertz. If this is a kid of eight years, perfect, no problem, welcome, that's normal, that's the norm. If this is an adult, then it has a big problem because everything is slowed down. For an adult, it should be 10 hertz. So this is... Um, and also we have here a lot of slow waves. Uh, I, I guess, I don't know from which client you took this, but I think this is a kid. <laughs> I hope it is a kid. Melanie, you know. Uh, you know? Yeah, it's a, uh, no, I don't think so. No, no. Okay, then no, it's... Because a... I wouldn't have put a kid's uh, alpha peak in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better to show when it's problematic. <laughs> okay, then, then, then it's really problematic. Then it's a brain wave. Uh, Yes, who needed this? <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but yeah, it was an adult. <laughs> okay, so the most common question. So before we go into more into the neurofeedback part, this is the first part is first what we always do is the recording which, to just see what's inside. Uh, we will explain the whole process like we work afterwards. These are the, the usual questions we get. Do I need to get a QEG or brain map before doing neurofeedback? Yes. That's the way we work. There are other types of neurofeedback where don't, you don't need this brain map. But in my experience, and that's what clients tell us every time, it's really a useful step and it's they learn to understand how they use your brain. So doing this brain map, it's also a process by discovering, understanding yourself. Does a QEG force me to do neurofeedback? No, uh, we just recently had someone um, a, a girl who offered to his friend for for his anniversary birthday a brain map, for example, uh, or the, the the parents for the children. I don't know to just see if if it is. It's really interesting part to see how your brain works and what is working well and not, and measuring it. I have one mantra: if you can't measure it, you cannot change it. So positively uh, informed is. To change something, you need to measure it. So, how long does it get to get the results? After recording, you need we need approximately one week, but you need to do the test. If you don't do the test at home, we don't give you the results. Are there any contraindications? No. Um, we have difficulties if um, the child is too young and cannot st sit still because movement is our enemy. Also, um, uh, if you have metal parts in the in the head, uh, then it could be difficult. Um, otherwise, there are no contraindications. Is there an age limitation? Oh, I think I did my, my youngest brain map. I think I did at six months so for, for, for a baby, but not neurofeedback. For, for doing neurofeedback, we start age five, six, then uh, it, it works. Is this covered by the National Health Insurance? Sorry, no. They don't pay for psychotherapy, so I think we could wait a few years more to get this uh, into yeah. the... Yeah. So uh, we continue to help people uh, until they are there. Um, is it covered by the Mutuel or complementary insurance company? I am not your company. It depends. I know that the people from the European institutions in Luxembourg they have possibilities to do but you have also have to 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 um, yeah to think about different is it really um, interesting to tell your um, insurance company that you have adhd i think that's a good question uh, i give you a comparison example in england uh, in uk uh, if you have adhd 
uh, you will pay your whole life your insurance much more. It's not the case yet in Luxembourg, but I would understand because yes, you have more accidents if you have an ADHD. Yes, that's that's true. Okay, so I think that was the part uh, about the uh, EEG. Should I do the neurofeedback or do we do do do, do you do it? As you want, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. The, the, I can do it, and then you can do about the yes. simulation. Okay. And you okay. Great. So yeah, you can do like this, so it's more active, <laughs> and everybody is not falling asleep at this time. <laughs> um, so, what are the classic solution and useful practice that you you have when you have ADHD or learning disability? Uh, so for ADHD, the main proposition when you go to a psychiatrist or a specialist is medication. Uh, the, the most popular one is Ritalin, and then you have also the Medikinet, the Concerta, Stratera, there's a, a lot of, uh, a few molecules. I've never tried it. <laughs> I was never needed, I, I never needed medication. Francois, you've tried it, I guess, and... You, you, oh, your, your micro is, is off. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> why is it off? Okay. <laughs> because I put it off uh, to okay. make some noise. Um, yes. No, the, the, the medication is, I, I'm not a pro medication, but I'm also not against medication. The medication works. It's yeah. as simple as that. For most of the people, it works. The problem is more getting the right medication mm -hmm. and getting the right um, uh, 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 amount. Mm -hmm. The problem comes when you have mixed things. If you have several things, the medication will not help you with uh, um, the sleep. The sleep example. Uh, also, the anxiety. There are changes that anxiety go up because it's a, it, it's a, it speeds up your brain. Yeah. So often, often there are problems with appetite. There are problems with growth. So there, there are problems, and there are about 20, 20 to thirty percent, depends on which study you look, where it's not responding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, so, and the experience uh, we so, I see a lot is that when the the younger ones they come in the puberty. Uh, 13, 14 years, they don't want to take it anymore because yeah. they say, it's not me. I want to be me. Yeah, they, they told me they feel like a zombie. Yes. And, and what and, is hard is after medication, when the yeah. Ritalin effect goes off, there is all the symptoms coming back and this back and forth. Mm. It's really a suffering for the younger one. Really, really. Yeah. Um, no, the, 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 there's a question also. Uh, Ritalin is not the only medication. You you also have a concerta, med, uh, no, a medicinate for sure. Yeah, uh, the, the, Luxembourg also. But, but, but they are, the, the, the problem is Luxembourg is such a small country. Um, often pharma co companies don't ask for the um, entry in the market. So they don't ask for the authorization to, to put to market. So mm -hmm. again, I'm not here to, to sell medications. Mm -hmm. What we offer and what we can say is we offer an alternative to that or a complement. Yeah. In several, in several, severe, several people, often it's enough that they know, oh, I can, I have an, a, an Ritalin in my pocket, but I don't need to take it. I'm confident and they go. Yeah. But um, uh, when I remember when I was working more in a stressful environment, a corporate environment, uh, I need to ha sometimes to have it because otherwise I couldn't handle it. So, but not taking it the whole time. So, the problem is more to find a specialist, especially if you're an adult. For children, we know a few doctors uh, uh, who are really good uh, and who know about it, but the most don't know. And the diagnostic is done in 10 minutes. And that's a problem because mm -hmm. a proper diagnostic. I think you have for six months and you have to visit a lot. Yeah, normally it should take it should, it should. for me. 
Uh, and it was easier for me as I am neuropsychologist and I know a lot of people in this field. So it was more, you know, practical friends, etc. And so they were needed to find other way. I don't know test <laughs> to do it, but it was, I guess I went three times for two to three hours to get the diagnosed then. Yeah. And that's so, the neuropsychological part. part so. Mm. so we will have addresses at the end. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Where, where you can get more help yeah. the, the, the problems is for example for adults i think it's really hard to find an, a doctor for adult adhd because yeah. the, the pedi pediatrician are not allowed to prescribe you um yeah. and they cannot help you not really i just see you know, but... a, a questions uh in a fabio ask are school in luxembourg equipped equipa to deal with adhd kids <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> That's a big subject. <laughs> I cannot. Uh, no. Um, okay, we are not neutral because we hear often horror stories. Really. We, oh yeah, uh, all the day long, all the week. I'm every, tired. Every, every week we every week we hear things which shouldn't happen in school. Oh, I'm so, tired of it. Really. Uh, so we are not we are not neutral. We don't hear the thousands of times. Where they are, good. where where it works well because they yeah. don't come to us. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there is good school and there is good teacher yeah. as always in every every yes. subject. So I'm sure. But but I can tell you, there's a difference um, in how the school handles it. In uh, in Belgium, for example, uh, it's usual that the, 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 they can better handle a difficult cases. That's why there are a lot of Luxembourgish people, students who go to Belgium, Arlon, yeah. whatever. Um, and we also had more severe cases when we we're not only ADHD, but also other things. Um, there are more specialized schools also in Germany, uh, really with, with, with a, uh, how do you call it, boarding school, uh, so yeah. um, uh, which could be really helpful. Um, yeah. But it's the same with uh, autism. All a lot of uh, severe autistic uh, children and grown up go to Belgium because there is no space for them in France. Exactly the same. We will give address at the end. Yeah, <laughs> we write everything down. Uh, so yeah, that's the classical. Uh, the, 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 yes, from, uh, the teachers are not trained. That's not true anymore. I hope so. I, I, hope so. <laughs> I don't know. We should. We should have. Yes. Uh, we, we, we had. Okay. Luxembourg uh, is. Um, um, yeah. For children, it's easy, but for adults, it's a problem. And then the, the 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 thing is, um, uh, we had a big change, because Luxembourg is a small country, mm -hmm. and there were a few years ago the Grand Duke uh, Héritier, uh, the, one of the son of the Grand Duke. Came, make it, made it coming out and said he has dyslexia. Oh um, yes, right. And, and and they organized a big conference, a big thing. It was into the press and it was public. And that the the, the Fondation uh, Grand Duchesse Charlotte organized also. Over Grand Duchesse mm -hmm. they did a lot of things that changed a bit. But yes, it it has not been yeah. Yeah, yeah. Vanessa and Jill don't don't. Yeah, we will give everything at the end, no, no problems. And yes, for adults. No, I, we don't have any specialists for adults. Uh, not no. really. Doctors, I don't know one. Maybe Denise. No, that's not but a doctor. She's not she's just prescribing. She's not prescribing. Yeah, Dr. right. Bolland, Dr. Bolandov, where we worked with five years long, yeah. is now specializing in ADHD. Um, oh right yes, yes exactly yeah. yeah we can we can give information we yeah. will write everything's down okay. in the chat so no okay so, so and then go over uh, medication too long talking talking about medication <laughs> yeah uh, and then for the adhd and ld you have all this uh, therapy and methods and uh, remediation mm -hmm. therapies and stuff like that they that are not replacing the medication it's in complement if you have adhd yeah. Medication alone is not enough. You have to learn about it and you have to learn yeah. and to exchange. And also all the, the remediation and therapist is way more effective if you get a diagnosed when you're kids, if you start yes. early. Otherwise, 
does not make any sense. Uh, I'm 27. Does not make any sense going to uh, cognitive remediation. No? <laughs> Better to do a neurofeedback session. <laughs> it's easier and faster. But yeah, more, more seriously. Let's let's go more seriously into okay. this project for people that don't know what is neurofeedback. Uh, it's not new. First of all, uh, I know for a lot of people, it's like, what is this magic and alien thing, science fiction? It's not new. Uh, it started in uh, 20, um, 20, 50 years ago. Uh, so there is a really, really funny story I love. It was with cats. Uh, so it was discovered uh, thanks to, uh, what's his name, Francois? I forgot. Um, Barry Sterman. Sterman. 1964, I think. Barry Sterman with cats. And mm -hmm. so if you want to learn more about all his study, and he totally discovered new feedback by Azar. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kind of false manipulation. was not the, the, the goal, but it is. was not intended, no, like, like usual. Yeah, yeah. So really interesting story. I love that because I love cats, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that's another topic. Uh, so what's what is I, I would i wouldn't say typical setup because uh, a little bit uh, i don't know if i can say trigger warning but there is several neurofeedback there is no not one type of neurofeedback there are a few one that are scientist they they have a huge scientist value evidence based they are evidence based yes yeah evidence based but watch out there are a lot of people that are practicing what they call neurofeedback okay let's put a name on it okay don't go for neurofeedback dynamic or neurooptimal because that's nice but it it's not specific it's relaxing but that's it yeah okay <laughs> so <laughs> let's go <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're really, really careful about that because the, the name neurofeedback is not protected, unfortunately. So yep. yeah. there is too many people going to a neurofeedback practice and spend thousands and thousands and thousands and no effect. And then it, uh, it gives uh, everybody a, a bad image of neurofeedback, of course. So unfortunately. So in the in all setup <laughs> uh, that's what happened you we are in the office like that i'm sitting in a chair in front of my computer on the left and you are actually uh, the patient or the client as you want to name uh, you are sitting in front of me on a chair and you are uh, linked to my computer with the brain eeg cap you know the setup francois showed before with small it's just small sponges with water it's not gel, it's not, it's really practical, just with water and a little bit of salt inside. And so I'm recording all the brain waves you have seen. Uh, there is 19 lines because there is 19 electrodes recording your brain in uh, real time. So when I'm seeing that on the computer, I'm measuring your uh, brain waves. And I want uh, this brainwave uh, translated in positive or negative. So what, what is that? If, for example, I have an anxious patient coming here, let me put my pointer on the mouse. That is a brain really under uh, a lot of stress, vigilance, hypervigilance, kind of traumatized, uh, anxious state, a lot of red in the frontal part and in, in the temporal part. That is a brain under anxiety. Uh, what I want the brain to learn is that this is not good. This is negative for him because it's uh, rumination, bad sleep, not uh, enough attention. A lot of energy is uh, used for nothing. And it's not helping is the, the the client is sitting in front of a screen when there is a film and movie going on so it's quite it's quite cool it's like uh, going to the the cinema and i need to associate the brain with the image so that is what we call the feedback the neuro part is recording but the feedback in the neuro feedback is the screen when the brain when I recall the brain and on the EEG, I see that the brain is under anxiety. I don't want that. The client is watching a movie. He's not supposed to have anxiety. That's a train. There's nothing 
like bad about it. So I will tell the brain that it's not good, it's negative, and punish him, not by uh, arming the client, but just by um, getting the screen darker. So that's the computer roles, to make the link between this, the EEG, and the reward. So when the EEG, the computer is recording this, boom, the screen is dark. And as soon as the high beta hyperactivity is decreasing, ah, good, that's what we want. I reward the brain by giving him a good screen quality. Uh, so that's what we call uh, conditioning, operant conditioning. It's like training for anything, like training a dog. I say, sit, sit, that's what I want. Okay, give him a, a, a sausage. <laughs> uh, it's exactly the same. The brain loves when it's perfect, when it's clear, when it's uh, when you can see clearly. And all this change, the, the, the screen going darker and clearer and darker, it's really fast. It's like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. It's, 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 it's 50 milliseconds between the measurement on the skull and the feedback. Just to have an idea... To form any sort, you need at least 200 milliseconds. So it's faster than you can think. So that means you cannot control it. You don't need to put a specific effort to it. You just need to enjoy the movie, watch the movie, and your brain will, will quickly learn that oh, when there is too much anxiety, screen is not good. That's not what I want. So I should find a solution to function differently to have a good, clear screen. So I'm not, we are not changing the brain. We are just showing him the way. That's what we are doing. We are putting parameters inside of the, the computer, of the system to tell, okay, we are now here and we want the, 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 the brain to go here. So we give him information back to help him self-regulate himself, but he's doing it totally I don't know how, I don't know which way he chooses to do it, but I'm just giving him feedback, reward or no reward. And he needs to learn with that. And the brain is really good at it. He's able to learn all the life for anything and uh, without any difficulties. In generally, under a minute, the screen changed for in the first session because the brain is like, ah, Oh yeah, okay. I see what you what you're waiting, what you want, and then during the session we're uh, increasing difficulty if it's too easy, or we decrease difficulty if it's too hard. We change the parameters. There is like at the beginning there is uh, one thousand and almost three hundred parameters, different parameters we train in the brain because we work with network brain network. It does more make sense? Makes more sense. Uh, and at the end, we are like one, we are 160, something like that. We, we go way more precise during the session to focus on the problem. And every session, we work on a different network because every session, we record your brain. How is it acting? Uh, how is it going out of the session? And so we know how to prepare for next session. So that's how it's working. No effort. Uh, the brain is totally able to correct himself. And that's why it's durable over time. You don't need to do new feedback all your life. It's exactly, that's why I, we put We, we don't want to see you so often. <laughs> yeah, we're happy when we don't see you again. <laughs> Even if we love you. But yeah, it's like the bike. Uh, if you if you learn correctly as a kid how to bicycle, how to ride a bike, even if you don't do it for five years, I think it's... 20 been, years, even. Yeah, I think yes. it's been five years I wasn't on a bike. I don't like riding bikes so much, but I think I'm still able to do it. It's just, okay, we'll hurt a little bit my butt, okay, but <laughs> that's okay. The, the mechanism behind is the neuroplasticity. Because why is neurofeedback so, if, so efficient? Because we go down in the deeper structures. We train in form of networks. We, we, we go really down to where it is, not by talking. You cannot change. You can change your brain by talking, mm -hmm. but you need years. <laughs> yes. Or even meditation, you need years to change it. Here, if you go out after one session, your brain is not the same anymore. Um, it changes. 
it's and, really you get, and 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 uh, it's amazing to always uh, every day we see it and every day we are still studying oh it works uh, yes like, yeah, and <laughs> we are still amazed by some of the was it this week with the the guy with the view with designs was that was last week last week yeah last week we, we're still amazed because sometimes you have people coming here with really difficult uh strange um, things strange things yeah like rare disease rare uh, uh body problem and stuff and so when they came to us we say okay we are not able to get back your vision like you're blind uh, but we can work on other things, memory, uh, uh, sleep, uh, angriness, stuff like that. We can help, when, but we, went, we will never be able to give you back your view or to give you back, you know, when you are a wheelchair. We are not magic, we are not wizard. But it has happened last week. <laughs> he came back and he said, you know that I'm able to view something now, like for almost a meter away from me. I was like, are you joking? <laughs> I was sitting on the chair, almost falling. I was like, no, you're lying. <laughs> he said, yes, I, I'm not. I see you now. I'm like, no way. So there is still magical things happening every day. And we're really happy with that because, yeah, yeah. that's the, the yeah. magic of the brain. <laughs> yes. So, but we are not only doing your feedback. That's why we have way more results and way more faster than other practitioners. It's because of, or thanks to neurostimulation. Francois, you want to talk a little yes. bit? Yes. Okay. We 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 are called neurofeedback Luxembourg, but in fact, we're doing much more than that. Um, we uh, because the, the the brain. I, I do this now since ten years. I scanned over 2,000 brain and I've trained over 1,500, I would say. Um, and we, I, I did, I think, I tried almost every kind of neurofeedback and almost every technique out, which is exists almost, almost. Um, and we, at one moment, the people are today, they want results fast. And if you're doing the traditional neurofeedback where you have one or two electrodes only, you need 40 sessions to get a stable result. And people lose the interest, especially ADHD, because you cannot delay the reward, you remember? Um, they, they lose they lose the track. So we added neurostimulation, which is an accelerator and a fa facilitator for the brain. So because the brain, it's, it works with frequencies, I explained you, this example is an, a beta state, maybe a little bit too small or too fast. If we stimulate the brain with alpha waves, so this will, what the brain will do automatically, it will adapt to the stimulation I give it. So we are not speaking here about TMS, which is, which forces depolarization of the neurons. This is a hammer for the brain or a bulldozer, I would call it. We don't do that. We have really small stimulations. But as, as, as soon as you ex, um, expose the brain to stimulation, be it magnetic, visual, or uh, electric, small intensity, I speak, not electroshocks, then the brain adapts to it. And so if the brain, if we put the brain in the alpha state a few minutes, and then afterwards we train uh, alpha, then the brain is really easy for him to get into the alpha state and to, to, to keep the alpha state because he has been there. We see, often we see people uh, which are really, really stressed, which is not the nice cases, when they don't have any alpha. So they don't have any resting state. They don't have it in the brain. They are full on or full off, nothing between. Uh, so then it's really useful to, to, to stimulate. What kind of stimulation we have? This is the, the, these are the three. This is the, the magnetic. These are low, uh, 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 low energy uh, magnetic things. It, it's, it's lower than your iPhone, but here we have the control uh, over the frequencies we give. The other one is the electric. It's not shocking. Uh, it, it's, it's like if it, itching. It's, it's like itching. You want to, 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 yeah, to, to itch, but uh, okay. Uh, and then the last one, which is mm, a little bit my, my favorite, and we use it now every session with the clients now, which is called uh, uh, photobiomodulation, which is transcranial light stimulation of the brain. Yes, it's light who goes through the skull into the brain, which has, we will do a, one one webinar just about on that because it's, it's such a wonderful technique and such helpful technique. Uh, 
it's crazy. Um, yeah, but too long to speak. So why does it work? Because I mentioned already, because we go to the source, we don't stay, we, we put electrodes on the, on the surface, but we go to the source into the brain. We really do what is, what is called Loretta, it is low uh, uh, resolution electrical tomography, which is really, we, we train the deeper structure of the brain and that's why it works. One session you have, your brain is already changed. The effects are direct. We, we can almost predict the effects which are will really happen because we, we have so much experience and we know when we do in the, when you're in that state and we do that brain you will have that effect uh, example the first session we will do the salience network and then 90 percent of the people have better vision uh, the second session we will do uh, the default mode network the one of the who am i the what am i doing my history my pain everything when we train that People often ask questions, but they get tired in the sessions. And 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 we can we can we know already in advance what will happen. It's good. There are some side effects, but not much. What is what is a side effect? Uh, for me, it's not a side effect. Every everything which has an effect has side effects. Otherwise, it has no effect. So what, what will people get? They will yes, you will get tired. And if you work on emotions, yes, there will be emotions coming up. That's okay. You want to change. You cannot change on your coach or couch. You have to go. You have to get out and move. Okay. There are, and there's a scientific base. It's not a who who esoteric thing. No. There are 15 years of research. You go to PubMed. You enter neurofeedback. You have almost 3,000 studies proving which are well. Some are good done, well done, some are not. But you have a real scientific basis. It's not. It's not a placebo. It works no no discussion there's no discussion about it if you don't believe don't come to us or just come and then try it and you will see <clears throat> the, the the thing is we can really based on the on the on the thing we we do we can really target what is going on um and when you when you when you uh, if we even if we do the same training no one gets the same training sessions and protocols and training parameters because it's highly individualized protocols. If we do the science network with two persons, then we will not train the same values. It will be different things because it's all personalized. We, you get you get an, an, an improving cognitive function. We measure this uh, before and after, and we see it regularly. The, the waiting, the, 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 the response time, the executive processing, the, more, the memory, uh, it changes and it improves. And you have the best results six months after you stop here. So um, we also we not only work on um, because in traditional neurofeedback you choose one uh, symptom and you work on that symptom, um, like mentioned in the in the brochure from the Luxembourg government where they last year they first recommended neurofeedback for ADHD. That's the first time, but they told oh it's only good for impulsivity and I don't know what. That's not true. We work also on the sleep, we work on the fatigue, we work uh, on, on the memory because we do more than neurofeedback and not, not the standard neurofeedback. Okay. Um, yeah, emotional management. So the, the self esteem is so important uh, because the people get a feeling hey, I, I, I'm not stupid, I can do it. And it works. And they, so the self esteem, can, self esteem is here. We can stimulate that point. That has an effect. And then we can train it to, to, to change that. The anxiety, the anxiety is where we get the best and the fastest results. The panic attacks, the people who cannot drive car anymore, who are afraid of hate, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I think we helped people who can't go on plane, can't go on car, who can't go on the driveway, can't, elevators, I don't know, we had everything already. Um, the sleep disorders, yeah. That sleep is a bigger topic, which because there, the sleep is often that any problem you have, the sleep is often that what first goes away, but it's also that what you first need to recover to get the learning effects again. So, um, you want to do the example? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> because you built them, so you can, it's, it's yeah. easy. <laughs> uh, it's just to, to show you how we're working a little bit in detail, so it's more clear in your head. Uh, I just 
we, we, I got a perfect example of a young girl with uh, difficulty at school, especially in reading uh, and calculate also. And uh, when she was speaking, it was really slow. She was always uh, trying to find a, a word, uh, getting lost when she was uh, starting a sentences and stuff like that. Uh, but she was really a great kid. It was, it was nice, but it uh, was hard at school because she was always the best student for the teacher, perfect girl, but uh, struggling uh, with weakened memory. So that's what we see here. Uh, what is it? Most of the time when uh, people come with uh, cognitive difficulties, we have a huge, I don't know how to say risk or chance uh, to see a huge increase in these uh, slow brain waves. Uh, what 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 is it? When you have too much delta and too much theta, uh, delta is uh, when a brain is totally slowed down in its functioning and uh, can can be delayed in its development. And uh, theta is more related with one of a typical uh, ADHD profile. In EEG, there is, what, seven or eight profile in Q QEEG, uh, Francois, I guess, but that's, that's the most uh, classical one when they have a theta increase in the central part. Uh, for example, uh, Francois, when you look at his brain, he has a huge uh, theta central in red, but that's not my case. And we have both ADHD. So, you know, that's why personalization is really important because every brain is different. Even if we have the, may, 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 the same symptoms, same severity, does not work like that. So that's why for us, the EEG is really, really important because we have all the information, what is going on, what is working, what is not, where is the problem, where is the symptom coming from, really yeah. important. That's the difference between the traditional neurofeedback, like it's done in the in most of the studies, is you have one symptom, you have one protocol, you that you do that 15, 20 sessions, and then you go to the next one. In our case, we were completely different. Uh, yeah. Because and, we work in we work, work in networks, not yeah. we measure on the surface, but you train the networks. And yeah. the networks you cannot see them here, but we see them. But mm -hmm. yeah, different. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one of the explanations was she has also uh, all speech related and reading related problems. There is a lot of amount of so brain wave in uh, the, the temporal part on the left and also here in the parieto occipital part. Um, so that is uh, really, oh yeah, I didn't use my special yeah. espresso mosey. And so that's that's a typical sign of a brain that with a delayed development, totally slowed down. Uh, it's like, uh, oh, what, what can example I can give you with a car? I, I'm trying to find a, a really good example. Francois, if you have ID. Uh, that's, that's the ralenti, the, 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 the idle rhythm is too low, so you cannot start. So, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the brain is just <laughs> like, you, you try uh, to the English word for Calais, but <laughs> yeah, that's really typical. And yeah, the, the central theta is a really good sign of ADHD like profile. So, again, it's not the EEG is not giving a diagnosis, and we are not able to diagnose you. Okay, really we, we, no, because we don't want you. You could, you have not normal psychologist, you could, but we don't want because yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I we don't want to put a label on the people because what we see, you are way more than your label. And as said in the, in the beginning, the ADHD comes almost never alone, there are always things coming with the ADHD. So, yeah. uh, and the labels are not useful. It's it's just an, a facilitator when you speak about things. We can give you answer. If yes. you have any doubt, if you feel lost, if you don't know what's wrong with you, it, it will give you answer to look at your brain. Uh, then if you want to get a diagnosis, feel free. Well, you go to, to specialists, etc. But it's not, an, it's not an obligation to have a diagnosis to come to us to do the QG. We, we don't care if you have or not a diagnosis. And you know that, like, I would say 50 to 60 percent of time people have a wrong diagnosis when they come to us, like bipolarity, 
No. <laughs> Anxiety or depression, uh, yeah, you have a trauma. So that's why medication is not working. Uh, sometimes we have ADHD kids that are autistic and not ADHD or, the, or that ha they have uh, anxiety. And so, yeah, so that, that, that's why people are turning in circle all the life, most of the time. Yeah. So, yeah. No diagnosis or the wrong one. So pay attention to that. And if you feel that the diagnosis is not suiting you, you're totally free to have a second opinion somewhere. So yeah, really important impulse. <laughs> uh, so, there's, yeah, there's, we... a, there's a question about helping alcohol damaged brain to function normal again. Yeah. Um, it depends on the damage and depends on the brain. But yes, uh, we, we, we were before in a medical center, which was, was also an addiction center. So we helped a lot of people to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to stop uh, their addictions or substance-based or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, can, it can help, but it so uh, you, you can, I, I, if you, I speak in image, neurofeedback is the software. So if the hardware has been damaged, the software can compensate some of the hardware damage because al alcohol damages the hardware really uh, fast. Uh, the software can compensate some, but it depends more on what is the person capable of putting in place in life hygiene changes the sleep the water drinking the eating the not drinking anymore if you st we will refuse to to train your brain if you continue if that's your goal to continue and just to get you uh, back to before so that you continue with the bad habits mm -hmm. we will not do it we yes. refuse we yes, refuse people. We refuse abuse people. Drug abuse is a no go for us because we will just help you keep going. But after, totally, yes, to, to yes. stabilize, to help you to get back because it's hard at the after. Uh, and also uh, TBI and stroke, also. But what is more important is how long ago did you get TBI or uh, a stroke? The more we wait, the less. Start, start young. Start young. Yeah. Start young as soon as possible. As and soon as possible. yeah, the, 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 the longer you've got it, the longer you will need session to have to help. Uh, and depends also, yeah, hygiene, uh, the things you will do on the side, etc. Uh, yeah, but we'll we've seen we have seen miracle, of course. It's the tip is when I when I, I first came in Luxembourg to to try your feedback and EEG, I've done mine <laughs> and my TB high was really high because I was horse riding and yeah, I hit my head uh, several times and was to the hospital and stuff like that. And it has helped my brain to get yeah. back on track and now my TBI is from positive to negative. Mm -hmm. I have no sign of TBI, but it was not a severe one. I have no bleeding, no, yeah, nothing bad. Yeah. So it's totally different, but it can help, can help. The, 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 the questions are always really, really good, but I'm always answering. We can give you a precise answer if we see your brain. As soon as I, I see your brain on the EEG, this kind of image, I have a more precise idea on where we are and what we can do or not. So that, that's always my answer. <laughs> we, we can answer you properly when we look at it. <laughs> uh, and how many sessions for the ADHD child? It's a good question. But uh, the, the, the thing is, for the, in the normal studies, it, uh, it, they 40. speak about 40 sessions, 40. Yeah. We speak about 10 to 20 sessions for ADHD. That's depends what, we, what there is. Depends yeah. on what else is there and the genetics and whatever. That, that's yeah. Normally it's 40 minimum, yeah, right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, to, to come back to, to my example, that was the sign of the disability. Uh, she did not get any diagnosis, but doesn't matter. It was the sign. Uh, she also, Francois talk, told, told us about later, uh, before, about the, the alpha uh, uh, decreased <laughs> brain wave in the brain. So that's I, don't, I don't know who you took as an example, but this makes me think about an autist uh, brain. Uh, the little girl we are actually having. <laughs> ah, yeah. But I yeah. think I, I don't, I'm not 
I'm not sure you get her in with her sister in the session. So yeah, Can't no, no it's me and Lou, I guess. Uh, but she, no. yeah, but she's really, she's cute, it, and his brain is really going better. So that's that's perfect. Um, then uh, we see also, yeah, we talked uh, before about the frontal lobe. We can also see if there is con a good connection in the frontal part and in all the brain. Uh, so, for example, the hypocurrents are a sign of uh, dysfunction of the frontal part is disconnected. And so the, the neurons and the brain part are not uh, having a good communication to do the task. So you see on the left, the executive processing is not really good. And there is a lot of filtering difficulties. And that's, that's uh, not good for attention, for example. Uh, what can I show you also? Oh, yeah. Uh, she has now done a lot of session with us, 15. Uh, but wow, <laughs> like nice. his brain are impressive. They're always impressing me because even if it's really, really bad, that's bad. At the beginning, it's changing so fast because the kids, different with the adults, they don't give importance to all the. Sorry, I would say I, I would say bad word. Well, shit things uh, adult does. <laughs> they are not. They don't think too them. much. <laughs> yeah, they don't speak. They don't care. It, their, their world is more simple. <laughs> so the training are way simpler. Also, yeah, it's it's working really really easily with with kids. That's impressive, and they're always happy to come to watch a movie. And yeah, it's it's always a pleasure for me to work with kids. Um, even if they have uh, behavioral or comportmental issue and it's hard with them, always easy to handle it. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a really good uh, case, but we have like many other to show you, but that was the more clear one for me. Uh, yeah, that's nice, a nice one. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, really important also, I'm sure people will ask, yeah, but there is still some uh, colors here. Yes, yes. Uh, but that's not what is important. It's not important to have a, a white brain everywhere. That's not specifically a sign of a normal brain. If the kid is better at homework doing, has good grades, feel good, happy, self-confident, has no trouble to concentrate during class and to do everything he wants, I don't care. So if his problem is solved, why touching something that is actually functioning? We don't need to, you know, to do 40 sessions to have a white brain. That's that's not, it, it's not. It doesn't, the, work. it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not the goal and it's not giving this kid anything. Instead, uh, losing time and money for his parents to do so many yeah. sessions. So that's totally normal to have small stuff yeah. still going on somewhere. And it's OK. And it's not as so if you can function with that, that's OK for me. <laughs> if your goal is achieved, that's cool. That's what I want. And in, in this case, this color is not a problem for the kids in his life. Sometimes we see still some stuff after 10 sessions and we're like, mm, I suggest you to do five more sessions because per experience, we know when you need it. But in this case, it's okay. We, we, have, we, have, we have the advantage and we have the experience. We see the brain during the sessions in real time. Mm -hmm. so, so we know what's possible and we know where there is a plateau when there is not any more uh, 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 progress to be made. Yeah. Just there are a few questions. To say, yeah, really interesting question. Yeah, I would start with the, the mother left arm. Sorry, can't say anything about that. Um, this is really more a part of um, uh, re-education and stimulation and yeah, that's but it. I, it, I know it, we are not the best one uh, for motor function. No. There, there is specific neurofeedback and biofeedback setup. Uh, I think I have still the book at home, uh, Francois, it's your book, <laughs> um, about this kind of stimulation to help paralysis and stuff like that. We have that's already nice. tried with other patients and 
we're not the best setup, uh, so I don't want no. to give uh, no. false I want, hope. I want to give, don't, don't want to give false hope on that. No. We, we could never make a, 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 a leg on our move, which did not. We, we it's tried. not a so. promise. It's not a promise yeah. we can make yeah. because yeah. it's not. It's not. Uh, yeah, ethic. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't say we can't help. Maybe uh, neurofeedback with education will yeah. help your mom with yeah. education progress. But it's like it's a big, big question. I I'm. I can't say yes, hundred percent sure. Okay. Not not possible. Then, the question from Janelle about uh, ADHD plus autism uh, <coughs> and uh, how give you important tools and explanations to cope oh, with daily yeah. base. No. Of we, 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 okay, well, one major part is that's why we insisted on Barclay method, on Triple P and things like that. There, we are not there to coach, we change the brain. We can give, I can give a lot of impulses or experiences, but it's not a structured way to explain what's going on. No, we change the brain. And that we are not doing coaching. Not not to, doing to cope with the yes. day life. But that's a big difference. The, the training and the education and being the expert of your own symptoms, that's your part. We can give you the, 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 the where to look at, but you have to do that. We can drone you and uh, knowledge. <laughs> yeah, but not, that's not help. The yeah, knowledge. The knowledge is not useful. What we do is more useful. So how would you approach patients with multiple issues? I uh, love this That's one. normal. That's normal. As, I, as we explained, uh, you, the ADHD comes never alone. My, um, my answer it? is everything is linked. Everything is linked. Issue and anxiety yeah. are exactly the same. They are friends, best friend of all times. And rumination is because you have anxiety and emotional issue. And intrusive thinking, also hyperactivity can, is linked to anxiety, it's a discharge of the body. Inattention is because anxiety is taking so much power on the long term that your brain cannot function and being attentive. And also, if you have rumination, walking on, how do you want to have attention? So it's all, always all linked together. And that, that is why, that is what um, is always, like I, I would say shocking me is that people know that, for example, uh, smoking cigarette is bad for the lungs. Uh, not eating well is bad for the gut. But uh, like almost 100% of people not in the medical field, they are not linking their symptoms together and to their brain functioning. We are totally disconnected for our brain in everyday life and uh, yeah, but it's always linked together. So yeah, we can totally deal because for example, the example you give, if I slow, if I get your anxiety out of your brain, you will see how fast rumination, intrusive thinking, hyperactivity, emotional issue and inattention will go away. Because we take, we took away one symptoms and woof, everything go. It's, it's a, a good circle coming on. So the, the, yes, and, and we are based on, on the network, so yes, because yeah. one area in the brain usually has 20, 10 to 20 functions, but if we train the brain, that the networks, then that's completely the whole story. So for us, it's normal to address multiple things in one thing by training the networks, but the order of the networks, what we what needs to be trained first, this is based on the data, on the test you did and then the symptoms reporting you do because one of the major one one thing is it's not a, a magic bullet for example people have really after each session to give us a precise feedback what did change and i don't want to hear things like oh it was fine that doesn't mean anything how was your energy level how was this how was that and based on the experience we have we know then what we should do as next step and because we can push the level and the intensity of the training of the stimulation, or we can go slow. Some I, I, I love I love your your questions, Lucas, because the yeah. next one is uh, asking how do you marry this with patient specific wishes or desire for what you address? <laughs> I love you for that question because one of the major part before starting your feedback is we have a contract. Yes. People must read, write down their objective, their goals, their wishes, everything they want. 
because we can see a thousand things on your brain, but as I said, it's not an obligation to uh, try to normalize everything. And so we linked all the results for all the, the data we have with what you want, and we know in which order when we need to target what network, which network. That was your other question. Uh, which could you target for the first, most coverage, so to speak? There, there is, that's the hidden part of your feedback that the client do not see. It's all the work we do before your session. It's, it's a, a lot of knowledge and experience to have to be able to link this kind of data, your wishes and goal you want, always linked, and the logical way to do neurofeedback, there is an order to respect also in the network we choose. For example, an anxious patient, Never don't do the ang don't never do the anxious. It will never come again. Like for sure, it will traumatize himself. So, so yes, I, I, I would I would give the citation from Ford. Uh, so if I would have asked my clients what they want before building the Ford T, the first car, uh, they would the clients would have asked faster faster horses. Uh, it, it's not always good to fulfill the wishes of the clients. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not always, but I see not always, thing. but we listen to it, but sometimes we know it better what needs to be done. Yeah, so. sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but we're sometimes. not specifically speaking about that if it doesn't matter. Like it's always we're not drowning you on the information if it's not you. But I, I just a, a small question for Jill. Is it really possible for someone who has ADD since their childhood to improve their mental health and coping mechanism? Yes, it's never too late. Yes. Your brain can always change, your life can always improve. There is always a solution and always something you can do. It's I, I, I think when also... you're still young, even at 60 years old. You can always do something for yourself to take care of yourself, always. The oldest client we had, I think, was 92, if yeah. I remember right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so maybe keep what... going and we will answer the next question. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Just how, how does it work, the, 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 the steps? So how is our process? The usual process is you watch a YouTube video or <laughs> this conference, you have more questions, then you can book a free call. Uh, where we require uh, re re answer your questions. Then the, the, the next step, uh, if you agree, you go on, is uh, the first appointment. This is the, 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 the getting the information. Uh, if you have reports from doctors, clinics, whatever, bring it with you, give us copy, send us digital. Then we record the, the brainwaves. You, at home, you have a lot of cognitive tests and questionnaires, and they are mandatory. Uh, apart if you are blind or whatever. Um, uh, and then one week, we need one week to analyze and put together the data. So the, the questionnaires, the cognitive tests, the brainwaves, but the information you told us, we put that together. And then we have the second appointment, one hour, one and a half hour. This is with me normally, um, where we give you the, 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 the explanation, what we see and uh, how the, the, how this could explain what your problems are. Um, then comes the active. Till then, nothing changed your brain. We just measured. But we had people, uh, we helped just with the brain map. So, okay. Then comes the active part going into the, the trainings. We call trainings, not therapy. You know? We call it training. Uh, it's like a muscle building. Uh, yeah. So one uh, hour, one session is usually one hour. We do a few minutes of neurostimulation. Then we come the neural feedback with film when it's eyes open or with music when it's eyes closed. That is a minimum of 10 sessions because it's a program we do. We spoke about the new the, the, the networks. We know which networks to start. We know which networks you can't start with and we know which networks you should do at the end. So there is an order to do it. And we don't want people to... Who, who, um, who start and then do nothing during six months and then again a session and come back. Don't come to us, go to holiday, pay yourself a nice weekend. Don't don't make us lose your our time and your time and your money. Um, it, because if you do it, it's like sports. It needs to be done regularly. So usually one session per week. But for example, this week we had someone from Paris coming here. Uh, they do 10 sessions uh, in a week. 
So it's also possible to do it like that, but it depends. We need to have data to see what is the best. So then after the 10 sessions, you redo the test, we redo the map. We have, an, we have again an appointment where we just talk about what has changed, what, what, where your goals achieved, what, which not, etc. Then uh, from there on, after the 10th session, we give you a recommendation, but it's up to you. You say, okay, I need time to integrate. As I said, you need six months to get the full results. Uh, you don't have the, the full results uh, when you stop. It needs six months to to refine the, the, the new uh, equilibrium. Yeah, it can still improve after the new. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And we have sometimes people who who come to us for doing the maintenance. Well, what did one client say? Oh, I do the maintenance of my car, even of my fridge. Why shouldn't I do the maintenance of my brain? <laughs> <coughs> okay. Then the good news is, uh, what does it cost? Um, um, you have the price later. Okay, yeah. okay, too early. Okay. If, uh, if you click. Yeah. Uh, next one. So. Um, really important step, please. Uh, yes. So. <laughs> because it's a mess for us if you don't respect this step, have them to. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we don't have a secretary who does nothing. Uh, 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 we have around 50 to 60 appointments per week clients. So we don't have time to manage your appointments. You have to go on your website, you have to book it, and you have to create an account. If you create an account for your child, create it for your child. Otherwise, please, for you, for please. You. Because you we, have, we have special... We have special hours who are reserved for kids. We have uh, so, but if you're an adult, you cannot come on Tuesday or Thursday afternoon, for example. Just yeah. to, to, because you have only few slots, so we want to help as much children as possible. So if you don't choose correctly the good category, you will have problem to book the room. We made a nice document. Uh, we can send it to you. Please ask. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I think it's, the video it's, is it's easy French. once you got it. Yes. The, the video you, is in French. Yeah. And there is we, a button on the top of the screen if you want to book. Yeah. And here is the link. So, what does it cost? So, the brain map, the first step, so the two appointments, the analysis and the results is normally 495 euro. Uh, and uh, with the code ADHD2022, you get it for uh, 395 uh, euro. So uh, that's the gift for today. Um, how much does an hour of your training back, cost? We will come huh? back to the to this screen. We'll just show some solution, and then we will get let the the, the codes uh, screen. But you can you can go further to give other. other yes, help. maybe uh, yeah, just about the, the sessions. How much does a session cost? The cost is now today around package. one one. Uh, the package is one thousand four hundred euro uh, for ten sessions. Um, to if you book single sessions, it's way more expensive because we don't want you to book single sessions. It's not useful. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah. yeah, we. Um... I, I see an interesting question from Sandy. The discount cannot only be used for ADHD problematic. No, you can use for every yes. reason you want to come. Yes. We are not that strict. <laughs> yes, and then you can. If you have anxiety and you want to book a brain map, no, go use use this yeah. cloud. It's okay. There is no. And, there is no restriction. and you can even book it now and make it only in January or whatever. So, but you have yeah. to book it now. Because it's only value, value, uh, value. Yeah, the code is valuable for any reservation until 2022 November. But reservation is the day you book the appointment, not the date. Okay. Normally, you should, if it's working great, right, <laughs> normally you should be able to book now for January with the code without any problems. Normally, it should be it should be fine. But it's if it's not. Uh, send us an email we'll see uh, sometimes there is some informatical bugs and problems so it helps us to uh, 
uh, improve everything. <laughs> we also have a question here from Vanessa in French uh, for for yeah, the yeah, a, small so, yeah. a, a small child uh, has uh, bad habits, so we cannot uh, we, we don't have the, the remote viewing capacity to see, look inside your brain of the children at distance. So we need uh, we have a, a need to have a look. But we have one magic tool which which you forgot to put in the in the presentation. Uh, safe and sound. We have oh, one, right. we, that is helping because all the we have also we have also one more modality of neurostimulation, we which is the... particularly adapted, and we had fantastic results yeah. with children, uh, which did only that. Uh, and other people uh, who did combined, or, or combined with neurofeedback depending on the age. Uh, uh, which is an audio neurotherapy at distance. Um, it goes through sounds. Through sounds, we go on the on the on the on the nervous system, which calms them down. We make them sociable. But if it's about aggressivity and rage, things like that, normally you you need to add uh, 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 um, neurofeedback. Depends. Yeah. Uh, we need to yeah. talk about that. Book a exactly. call. And talk I totally about forgot it. about it. <laughs> yes. It is the magic tool. Sorry. Yeah, but. <laughs> it's, it's, Okay. Uh, um, I, I see that Di Diana is uh, asking, am I allowed to drive after session? Yeah, of course, there is no problem for driving. The only recommendation we will give you, because we will always give you a recommendation, is not going uh, to the sports, doing hard, intensive sports after the session, or going to a party, drinking a lot. Because you're going as fast, and it will not allow more effort. What, what, what we normally have, example, for the alcohol, is an, it's an important part. Your reaction to alcohol will change. You will be way more sensitive. Yes, right. Way more sensitive. Don't underestimate. Not tolerate it's, too much. So it, it's, it's getting cheaper to get drunk, but that's not the way to do it. <laughs> so just for people who are asking where to go. Uh, yeah, I no, we have some one question here about undiagnosed epileptic absence. Oh, yeah, sorry, I missed. Uh, yeah, could yes. you uh, please the, tell the, the title that's undiagnosed the, epileptic absence during two years? Yes, epilepsy seizures was the first application of neurofeedback 50 years ago. Yes, it helps, but we have actually one that, uh, yes. As epilepsy and autism, and we, both are increasing and improving. I, 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 good. I would not say we can cure, or but it's possible. What we mainly achieved is the reduction of the intensity and of the uh, of the number of seizures. Um, I had one client who, before he had when he had a seizure, he was on on two or three medications, so an, an untreatable epilepsy. And it doesn't help. He had almost every day seizure and or, or three per week. So he was down, down, down. And at the end of the se se sessions, he could have one seizure during walking and it continued. So that yeah. was really amazing. So wait, wait, okay. Uh, um, he's asking, I can't book an appointment until I check my financial situation. Will it be a big problem if I can only make the appointment for this? No, the code is uh, available since uh, until 22 November, but just good question, good reminder. Know that we know that neurofeedback and QNEG is a huge amount of money for a lot of people. So, but... If you have, if you are motivated and you want to do it, we have no problem to try to find a financial way to help you to to pay that with uh, mensuality. It's just so we, we cannot lower we cannot lower the price of our services because the the building where we are the technology has a cost. Everything, yeah, uh, but but Salary. we can uh, we can diminish, uh, diminish and let you pay it monthly base so that. That you can afford it. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, no, normally no, we have always solutions. We will we always have always solution. It. So okay. just ask us and to find a solution okay. because it's not available on the website. If you want to pay, it's okay. always the full price. Where to get help in Luxembourg? Uh, I would say the first one is the TDAH.lu. Uh, this is the, the the latest site from the education. The, all the resources here we have, it's only for children, nothing for adults. 
Um, the, we have the, the, the CDA, the Centre de Développement des Apprentissages. Uh, they help go into school. Uh, they have different programs, so you have to talk to them. They don't do what we do. And you have the SCAP, who is also to, doing the, 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 the diagnosis and so help in school. Uh, but again, it stops at 18 years, uh, and then you have uh, yeah, you have to be uh, an adult. For so adults, um, I would recommend uh, there's a neurologue, which is called Dr. Pincherly, which I find is doing serious work. And there is also the doctor where we worked with him uh, uh, five years long, which is Dr. Bollendorf. He's in the Centre Medical Rolling Grand. He specializes in ADHD. Um, the, the, if someone gives you too fast diagnostics, the diagnostics run away. Uh, getting a serious ADHD or whatever diagnostics, it's a long and expensive process. It's mm. a long and expensive process. Yeah. Everything which is done in two meetings, forget it. Doesn't work. It doesn't. It's not worth the paper it's written up. Um, it's not serious. Yeah. Uh, okay. Vanessa is asking an interesting question. Uh, if she needs to take first evaluation or first yes. neurotherapy, always new, uh, evaluation because without seeing your brain, I have no idea how to do neurofeedback. And it's really dangerous if you go somewhere, if they don't measure your brain and do a stimulation or neurofeedback. Because, for example, we have a lot of cases, in, especially in adults, more than in, in kids, but... They have a depression, but that is hidden. They don't feel it, but it's there in the brain. We see a huge alpha on the left frontal part. And so if they come with uh, stress symptoms and they want to work on anxiety because they feel it, the things people will do, it's giving more alpha brainwave on the brain. But without knowing that there is an hidden depression, you can worsen the depression to suicidal thoughts. So that's really dangerous. We will never touch your brain or do anything without seeing what's going on up there. So yeah, always first evaluation and then we see <laughs> what we do. So I, I hope we answered a lot of questions. There are still many people there. Uh, if we didn't answer, please book a call. We will answer the questions. So. It's a free free consultation performed. Free consultation. The, well, just need a little bit to book in advance because, yeah. Um, the next uh, webinar we are doing will be the depression and neurofeedback in French or in English? In English, because French is already made. Already uh, made, done. okay. And so we, we, we will do depression. And I think in January we will do in English um the uh, aging of the brain how to slow oh, yes. the, 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 the brain and dementia so that yeah. will be more in january i guess and we will need to do sleep i think in english also okay um, um if you have any topic you would like to know more about don't hesitate yeah, also... we, we have a lot of uh, french uh, presentation on youtube already uh, yes. we say uh, yeah, so that's the contact always per yes. email. If you have more uh, things, please book a call. It's the best way to take time to answer uh, your questions. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, this is, don't forget the code. And thank uh, you very yeah. much. We will, we will, we are recording. So normally you will be able to find uh, now on Facebook directly the, the live. But we will, as the quality on Facebook is not the best, we will post it on Facebook. Um, I'm not sure I will have time next week to. YouTube, post. you mean? YouTube. Uh, YouTube, sorry, but maybe. Uh, in ten days, in ten days, it will be there. Yeah, we will. We will send you an email. But if yes. you follow us on Facebook and on YouTube, you won't miss it. So. Okay. We, We'll try to do that as soon as possible. But yeah, don't hesitate to send us uh, email or to the, the better is a free consultation per phone yeah. because it's easier to, to speak together per phone uh, when you have questions than answering uh, and giving you thousand email, different email. So great. 
Thank you very much for your time and for listening. I hope it was useful. Apparently it was. Thank you, Janelle. Yeah, I see small hearts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to see yeah. that. that. Yeah. Okay. And then I hope that you are doing good. Uh, I hope you don't need our services. Otherwise, we are there yeah. to help you. We are happy yeah. for everyone who doesn't need our help. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, we wish the COVID wasn't there and the war and the stuff like that. We I prefer I would be uh, workless, but you know, that's, that's how not really, work. not really. Yeah, we love what we're doing. We love people. And even if it's always speaking about uh, uh, heavy issue and problems, it's always ending up happy. So <laughs> yes, it's OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. So have a, a great evening. Uh, good. Good lunch, no, not lunch, but uh, eat Even. well if you're hungry now. <laughs> the the cat is dead. It was really quiet. I'm really happy. She was nice. You're a good cat. <laughs> she was not making a mess. <laughs> yeah. She's going well. Okay. Have a good then, good night and good week. Good, uh, good weekend almost. Yes. Thank you. So bye bye. -bye.